say we're gonna play a game whoa ho what do you know we're gonna play control Um... That's horrifying. I, I really don't think the uh, Federal Bureau of Control should have its own children's programming. To whom it may concern, I'm being contacted by pa the past presidents of the United States of America. They appear as spirit guides, giving me their wisdom. John Adams keeps saying I need to fix America, but I can't really understand him. They all have a lot of opinions. People tell me I'm imagining it, but Theodore Roosevelt showed me how to fix my lawnmower, and I don't know a thing about lawnmowers. Explain that. I have, a great I have great dead men telling me about the past and the present. If you'd like to use my abilities to help run the government, please let me know. I know the White House could use me. Yours in earnest, James Bartholomew. You know, James, I think I, um... I think I might prefer that at the moment. but one exactly like it, a perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on, and they did. We don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disk, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. Oh, OP. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we, we've launched Three dozen pencils. And once, we even launched a cup. Whoa. Handy tool there. Communications. We're on the right track. Okay.
sound design's really great here. Stepping in a puddle. Oh. Pneumatics. Object of power. Oh. Looks like the hiss have latched Ooh. onto it. We need to cleanse it. It's harder to hear you when I'm here. It's like the channel's been changed. The board's in charge here. They're pyramids in the bureau seal. Are they really the ones pulling the strings? I'm not their director. I'm no one's director. <laughs> This is what energy's for. There you are. You were gone. Cut off. I got oh, it. Oh, cool. Just like you wanted, right? This will help me fight things. <laughs>
am a fan of launch. Disc. Must be contained in a cell with no other loose material. The object is an 8 inch diskette containing Soviet area nuclear launch codes. When bound, the object allows para utilitarians to telekinetically lift material and throw it a short distance. See Dr. Darling presentation 11.15 for more information. The object is currently bound to redacted for research purposes. Stolen from a Soviet military base located in Redacted by Agents Redacted and Redacted with the CIA. The diskette contained launch codes to Redacted missiles, believed to be reserved for use against Redacted. After being returned to America, the diskette began, began throwing com computational hardware at members of the decoding team. An informant in the CIA tipped the Bureau off, and it was requisitioned by agents the next day. No. Oh. Yeah, we don't need to watch that again. over here then. Oh, a shelter. More book club. So, I don't usually read a lot of sci-fi, but as far as space operas go, this was alright. The title, Unless You, could refer to a bunch of things in the book, I guess but I thought it was a little vague and stupid. The way the characters kept throwing it around almost like a catchphrase got real annoying real fast. The best part of the story was the space battles. I sided with the fixers, obviously, because they had the coolest tech and their motives made the most sense to me. Honestly, if I had to choose between some hoity-toity flowers and guns space hippies or a badass bunch of warriors who go around devouring planets like cheap sushi on a Sunday, I know who I'm picking. That scene where they invade city planets and convert the entire population using those brain worms? And that space dogfight between those two ace pilots? Sign me the fuck up. What kind of ruined the whole thing for me was when my favorite character got killed not even halfway through the story by getting a battery cylinder launched into his face by a gravitational anomaly. His death didn't feel necessary at all. Oh my gosh, demolition expert. I think they have grenades. Ranger. I think they have long range weapons. Okay. Oh. 
Okay. Emily said that the hotline can be reached through the mail room. That looks like a mail room that needs clearance. Clearance level one. This must open the door. Finally. I have a feeling there's going to be a fight in here. What do you say? attention okay clearly there's more going on in that room than I thought all right let's try that again and this time we're going to take cover. We're going to walk around. They can fly now. Great. Where'd he go? This is Tomasi. Hi, guy. Give me your health. Thank you. Ow. Grunts just to get some help. Oh, there's some help. I'm going for it. Excuse me.
All right. Third time's a charm. I think I got a better handle on this. Can't let him throw his shit at me. They can fly now. Great. Stop it. Oh my god. Fourth time's a charm. Yep, there he is. They can fly now. Great. Go to 
the upper level. So I want to be on the upper level. <laughs> it's not over. Great. Cool. I have a thing. Yeah, he'll be back. His elevated agents display abilities similar to telekinetic comp competencies observed by Bureau Para Utilitarians. That's a lot of words I'm unfamiliar with reading regularly. Some prefer to charge their targets while others launch objects at them. Telekinetic attacks have been ineffective against the Hiss Elevated due to their own talent in the area. They do not use any weaponry except their own paranatural capabilities. Some Hiss Elevated have been seen levitating while strapped into chairs. This is likely the result of individuals being corrupted while undergoing cognitive record recording in parapsychology. How are they able to use paranatural abilities? It is possible these individuals were bound to objects of power prior to corruption. It's also worth considering that the Hiss resonance can identify and express latent paranatural ability in the individuals it corrupts. Refer to file redacted for full report. Billing, he'll be back. Yeah, he's definitely going to be back. Let's stay focused. The hotline should be past the mailroom. What do you mean, where he went? Hmm. Oh, health. Excuse me. Thank you. Oh, hello. Hey, Malcolm. Yes, tea time is at 7. I'll see you at the course on Sunday morning. By the way, have you heard about this Tennyson report? Apparently, there's a bunch of copies drifting around the office. Trench is looking to get his hands on any information about who wrote it. You wouldn't happen to have heard anything about that, would you? See you Sunday. No, Jim wouldn't know anything about that. Nothing special. Yeah. You're listening to America Overnight, mystifying the airwaves for more than 29 years. Thank you for staying up with us. Ghosts. We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. 
Today, friend of the show, Dr. Quincy Reagan, tells his story. Quincy. Thanks. This is something I experienced recently while staying at the Chili Pines Motel in Macon for last year's Suspicious Con. I was in room 47. The night manager, an avid listener of the program, insisted I take this particular room. Now, the manager explained that years back, the body of a man was discovered under the bed, inside that wooden border that motel beds tend to have. And the body had been there a week, he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse a foot below him. They only found the body when housekeepers complained about the smell. Hauntings have been reported in room 47 ever since. I happily took the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. No ghosts visited me, no chilly spots or flickering lights. But when I woke up, I found myself under the bed. It was dark and stiflingly hot. Luckily, I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind enough to find me another room. Oh, there you have it, <laughs> listeners. What we call ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story, and I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange, something you can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we have no name for. Maybe your toaster is possessed. Remember, dear listeners, when no one else believes you, we do. America Overnight, we'll be right back. Hmm. America Overnight, mystifying the airwaves for more than 29 years. Interesting. Gross. I have a feeling this is gonna hurt me. Yep. Okay. Okay. We'll come back to that. Pay attention, Alberto. This is the last time I'm explaining this. Internal lockdowns are manually triggered events that lock one or all of the sectors by restricting use of the sector elevator, effectively locking staff in their sector until the emergency is handled. They can only be lifted via the directorial override in maintenance once the director is satisfied that the situation is under control. External lockdowns are a bigger deal. Nothing in or out of the whole building. It's only triggered by a code red containment breach based on some complicated system that security and research slap together. It can only be lifted once A, the threat has been neutralized, and B, a high clearance individual gives the system the all clear. This process is not the same as the directorial override, so stop saying so in documentation. I know it's confusing as hell. I've told Darling a hundred times to change it, but they're adamant it stays the way it is. Honestly, I don't think they even know how to change it at this point. Let's just make sure our staff understands how this mess all works, okay? Okay, Marshall. Oh. Here we are. Hello there. Oh. 
I guess. Oh goodness. Summary. Last month, our on-site servers experienced an intrusion by unauthorized users. After a thorough investigation, it was confirmed that the users only accessed a video file, which contained portions of various Dr. Darling presentations. Investigators were able to track the users through their IP addresses. The following are the confirmed identities of these users. Patrick Strutjens, Rubens Noguera, Arto Kolmaki, Christopher Mills Bowling, Yako Sarnin. These individuals are in breach of Bureau Code 91 and have been placed under surveillance by our external investigation team. Further action is pending. Y'all got hacked, bro. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. I thought my company was strict about internet usage. Gotta have level five clearance. I can't even use the internet here. 